of Zion. Just lift those hands and bless the name of the Lord. Just open your mouth and worship Him. Give Him all the praise due His name. Just thank Him. Thank Him for the revelations you have received. Thank Him for the direction. Thank Him for the wisdom. Thank Him for the great impartations. Just bless His name. Just thank Him. The Lord alone is worthy to be praised. Just glorify His name. Just thank Him. Father, we bless you for what you're doing, for what you will do. Thank you for you will crown this next level conference with great anointing tonight. Thank you for the kings that you are set to anoint tonight. We give you praise. We give you worship in Jesus' precious name. We have worshiped. If you're excited to be here tonight, just do something uncommon for Jesus. Just bless the name of the Lord with a shout, with a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Let me tell someone beside you, I've entered my next level. Tell the person, come along with me so I don't leave you behind. Tell the person, the train is moving so fast and I hope you catch up quickly. And to take us further tonight, once again, all the way from CIM Kenya, Dr. Titus Masika. You can do better than that. the Lord we are moving we are not here for children game we are moving to the next level hallelujah hey Allow me to appreciate the great man. Around there, there are men apostles from uh, Ghana, Niger, and the pastors of this great ministry. Let me appreciate great people who are in this congregation. Allow me to appreciate the mother of my children. And my dear wife. Can we be seated? I, I am blessed when I come to Nigeria by the way of singing. Already your singing is in the next level. And if there's anything to begin exporting, is exporting your way of singing. And I thank God for them. Thank you. I, I want to share a few things and trust God for any infusion. 
in fusion. Um, when I look at you and the theme of this conference, I am convinced that we can change Africa. And we can change Africa in the shortest time. And so I'll share some hints that I think now can help us take over Africa for Jesus and establish his kingdom. When Jesus came, he began to say, the kingdom of God is a hand. In other words, it's with him. And when he left, we were left with religion, church, denomination. And uh, that's the problem. But uh, Dominion City have come to bring kingdom. And we are here not for church, denomination or what, but we are here for the kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so I want to, to share the next level now. Get, get set on your marks. And I want us to read the book of Luke. Uh, Luke chapter 19 and verse, um, verse 13. Luke 13, uh, King James, King James. Now bring King James. Uh, and he called his ten servants and delivered them ten pounds and said to them, Occupy till I come. Can everybody say occupy? occupy. Underline and write it as our watchword. That's going to be our watchword today. Occupy. <laughs> Occupy. Till I come. Do business. Take charge. Have dominion. And Till I come. So that's what we are going to do from here. And before I get charged and charge you, let me give you a few points. Before we do that, there are a number of things that I want to propose to you to us for us to occupy Africa there are a number of things I will mention at least two, three, four, five according to time and one of them is, uh, is found in Isaiah chapter 6 verse 7 just get there and we get back to watch, watch what and he laid it upon my life and said, Lo, this hath touched thy lips, and thine iniquity is taken away, and I sin purged. That, that's the point number one. In this great assembly, we need the, expe the Isaiah experience. Isaiah experience. He, it comes in chapter 6. So he had begun earlier. And the Bible says in the 6th chapter, the angel of the Lord came and touched his lips, his mouth, and it punched his heart. We need a touch of our lips and a punch of our heart. And if that happens, let me tell you, Nigeria, 
when Nigeria, you know, now coughs, Kenya gets cold. If we are going to have a new brand of preachers, a new brand of Christian from Nigeria, Africa will be changed. I thought you can clap for that. There are some people who have come out of this country and have messed up other countries. But there are many who are doing wonders all over Africa. But we must come and sack those guys. We must replace them in Jesus' name. We need women and men full of the Holy Ghost, washed up the blood by the blood of Jesus. People who love God and hate the devil. People who, have, who are punched in their heart. They are clean. They have a new heart. If we do that and export that all over Africa, we're going to have a new beginning in, the, in Africa. And that's my prayer tonight. If we have holy men, righteous men, honest men, men of integrity, let me tell you from, from Nigeria, Nigeria is, you know, you don't know, we count it as the capital of Africa. You go to, Nor to Norway, Sydney, Australia, Canada, America, Kenya, Uganda, there are, you, you know, Nigerians are everywhere. Unlike Kenyans, if I say how many Kenyans are here, I can get one or two. But if I say that in a conference anywhere in Uganda or Kenya or Rwanda, now the Nigerians will be there. We thank God. But we want to replace some of them. We want ambassadors. We want ambassadors from this meeting. Ambassadors of Africa from Dominion City. And we want a new brand, a new brand of sisters and brothers in business, in, uh, in commerce, in everything, in every profession. In the lingos, you know, uh, profession, in every profession from Dominion City. People are dominated by the Spirit of God. Am I, am I going to go with anyone here? I hope I'm with you. I'm with you. Did you write it down? May the Lord touch your leaves and the, everyone's leaves and, and, and punch your heart. And give you a new brand. A new brand for Africa. A new brand from Dominion City. A new brand from this uh, next level conf assembly. So, that's the first thing I want us to export from Nigeria. And we have the population. The next thing I want us to do to, for us to occupy. There are a number of things that I think we, not, we need to do. And one of them is change our mindset the mindset that is controlling africa africa is controlled by many mind mindset and worldviews but i want to mention two or three before i move on the first mindset and the worldview that occupies almost the whole of africa is called animism Animism. Animism is the belief that our ancestors will animate blessings. So you don't need to work hard because when in our tradition we used to believe that uh, our, our ancestors will roll blessing upon your life. Doesn't matter what you do. And then we have transferred that to the church. Because today, now when 
when you have a conference in Nairobi and say, I'm going to pray for now for prosperity for everyone. Everybody will plug, you know, will fill that hall because people want free, free, free blessings animated miraculously. But let me tell you now, God does not give wealth. The devil promises wealth. God gives us power to create wealth. God gives us power to create wealth. So animism is that belief that we are going to be given wealth. We had some preachers who are talking about wealth transfer. In other words, you transfer now wealth from one person to another. That does not create wealth anyhow. It's wealth transfer. So here I'm not talking about wealth transfer. I'm talking about wealth creation. That's how Africa can be wealthy. In animism, we believe in wealth transfer and that is in the second element of uh, that mindset that, you know, witches can transfer somebody's star to another one. And that's why we want preachers to come and transfer some wealth, I don't know from where, and then they're, they're branded to you. But I am saying we are not for that brand of faith. We have a brand of faith that we know by believing in God, you give us power to create wealth. It is us to, pray, to create wealth. Recently, uh, we were going for a mission and one sister began to, was praying very loud. It was full of the Holy Spirit. And he started sending, telling God, God, we are sending you in a in the, in the, in the place called Nyeri. We are sending you to the mountain. We are sending you to go and say, people. I opened my eyes and said, oh God, I'm not a part of that prayer. I don't have capacity to send God. God sends you. God sends us. We don't want to go. We want to intercede. Let me tell you, in the session, we need to pray that God gives us power to do. Not God to do. The last time God was busy giving people, now what in, was before, in, from Egypt to Jordan, they were given manna. And after Jordan, manna ceased. And I'm not sure manna is coming again in Africa. And because of that, I have begun a program saying Operation Relief Out because we have enough resources in Africa. And so that's, the, that's, um, that's one of the things we have to do away with. The next thing, out view that controls most of us in Africa is the Greek worldview. The Greek worldview is um, that kind of belief that now believes in now um, the Greek one few believes in education, in philosophy, um, in uh, professionalism, in the white collar jobs, um, and so, and that's the one that is ruling us because we went to our universities. Now we now and we have love, we have engineers here who cannot make a road. We have engineers who can't make a machine, machine here. Yes. We have to depend on China. And yet we have engineers who are seated here. And if they make road, it starts dilapidation the next two years. Because to them, they don't want to do that kind of work. They want to be managers. Why do you call a job people? That's the Greek word for you. And so, for me to be a great preacher, you must say, I am Dr. Doctor. Mm, Dr. Masika. Uh, so when you are told I'm Dr. Masika, you think I can deliver. It is not by letters, but by the Spirit of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. You can have, that is Greek world view. You can have letters and deliver nothing. Huh? You can have, you can be a professor. Huh? We used to have a professor who used to read notes. He has been a professor for the last 20 years and he cannot remember what he told the other class. 
He has to read us not. He does know anything. He is a Greek world of your mindset. We need people who are innovators. Innovators. Not consumers of knowledge. So the Greek worldview is about knowledge, acquiring, acquiring even skills, acquiring, acquiring profession. Mm -hmm. That's the, world, the Greek worldview. And then you are very happy. I'm professor, doctor. Hmm. Another fellow said, I am doctor, doctor. For example, I have two doctors. So you want to be called doctor, doctor. Nonsense. We want to know what have you done with what you know. So we must change our mindset from the Greek worldview, which is occupying almost three quarters of us, including myself. But I began to rebel, as I told you, in standard four, standard six, and then uh, 25 years ago, I rebelled again. I left the teaching profession because I can't hear anything which is, which is limiting us. I want something that is exploding something that is exploring, something that is innovative and creative. That is about kingdom. And so, uh, that's about the Greek uh, in our worldview. Then, which is the, the alternative? The next alternative is the Hebrew worldview. The Hebrew worldview. The Hebrew worldview is about doing. Doing. Innovation. Application of technology, improvement of innovation, mm -hmm. continuous research for continuous innovation and improvement of the previous technology. When the Abbasid of Israel visited my sender some years back, he was so fascinated and, and uh, he told me, Bishop, I want, I'm going, the only punishment I can give you is to send you to Israel. And he sent me to Israel for two months. And I was moving from one university, from one place to another. And uh, one of the professors there, now he told us, now what they do, they go and buy now ammunition from Russia. They improve them and they sell them 10 times what they bought them. That's why they are, they are fast world. They have no minerals. They have nothing. But they have a world for you which is empowering. Did you hear what I've said? Empowering worldview. The other ones are disempowering worldviews. And so because of that, today, today the guys, Israel, um, you read about the Hezbollah. Now, they detonated that their, 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 their mobile phones and they became bombs when they are clumped miles and kilometers away because they have learned all the technologies and now they have mastered them. Okay, and now they, they are now controlling. And let me tell you, they are having the best technology, the best innovation in IT because of their worldview. From standard one, standard, a standard six, you know, pupil from Hebrew, you know, worldview is better than a from six fellow in Africa because of the worldview. We need to change our worldview from the Greek worldview to the Hebrew worldview. Amen are with me. In the book of Acts chapter one, verse one. Now, um, the writer begins to say, oh, you Theopilas, I'm, I am presenting to you what Jesus became to do and teach. Not to teach and do. If it was a, a Greek, now writer would have said, I am presenting to you what Jesus began to teach. Because to the Hebrew, teaching does not matter. What matters is what you do when you are taught. And so I'm, that's why I, uh, that's the, the theory and the worldview that I adapted in my life. And you know, in, in my synapse, uh, if you read and in my name, um, and, and again, and the Christian Impact Mission, you will see there are many innovations. Of course, some have hidden there. 
Now, a number of people have come um, to borrow the technologies and our curriculum. And, uh, and I give them. And uh, one, of the, one of my friends from one of the regional offices and one of the organization is also here. I don't want to mention. He came and told me, Bishop, the people who are coming from the global office are thieves and robbers. They want to steal your model, which they did, of course, and they're not going to acknowledge you. I said, I don't care. Even if they do, now I am going to, you know, within a year, I will have changed the model to something else. So they will come again. And another year, I will change again. I will improve it so they will come again. So they will be coming every year. And I will be selling the model to them. Because I've adapted the Hebrew worldview. So I don't care when people come. You know, the, the designers of their models on, and their program. I give them, university I give them. Because I know these guys have, are full of Greek worldview. So after that, they'll go and they use it. And some of them, I don't give them the password. I give them the model and I remain with a password. So that if they joke, I can pocket everything. Yes. That is what it's about. We call wisdom. Yes. Can I hear the word wisdom? Ay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> this is good now. Now about, um, that's, that's about the worldview. We are, because we are not in class. We want to go quickly to the action. Now the, the, the third thing, if not, uh, if not the fourth, I think the third thing, we need to change African identity. African identity. Because the way we are designed, we cannot help ourselves and we cannot help. We need to develop what I called yesterday Christian identity. Christian, African Christian identity. African Christian identity. Because today, the whole of Africa is under, um, is in crisis. We have identity crisis. And so, we need to develop because when they came, they brought to us even religion. They brought to us, now they told us, uh, you know, uh, they brought up this is secular and this is sacred. And that's the religion that I've, I grew up with. And I began to rebel in, when I was young in the church. They were telling us, you see, now, there are things of this world. Uh, education is of this world. Being a teacher is of this world. Doing business is of this world. Being a politician is now the worst thing of this world. And they left Kenya. They came to Nigeria. And they told you the same nonsense. And you believed it. And now we have allowed the devil to sit in the high places. We are going to throw him how today in Jesus' name? Amen. That theology is rotten. It is not from the Bible. The same God who created the heavens. Jesus came to redeem, you know, I all that which was lost. Did you hear what I've said? In, um, in, um, in uh, Luke chapter 19, verse 10. Write that. You know, Luke chapter 19, verse 10. The Bible says Jesus came to seek and find that which was lost. When did it get lost? I'm disapproving the theology of sacred and secular. Now it was lost in the garden of heaven when Adam sinned. Now, the, the, when man sinned, he did not lose only now salvation. He lost it is not the man who was lost only. The man was lost, number one. Quickly, I'll tell you the thing that were lost. Number two, relationship between man and God was lost. Number three, there was a garden which was feeding him. Now he lost, therefore, livelihood. Livelihood. Get it right. 
I want you to have the right theology. Some of you might be having the legacy of their previous, you know, theology. They lost. Um, so, number, number four, they lost when, when they were chased out of the garden. They lost the angels and the security. So, they became vulnerable. So, they lost protection. And that's, we inherited what was lost. And, uh, and so on. We, Jesus, God used to come in the evening for fellowship. So we also lost fellowship with God, relationship with God. And so on and so on and so on. And this is why the church is not making impact in Africa. Some year, a few years ago, I was invited by two statesmen in Uganda. And they told me, Bishop, now the president abused us. And uh, some of us felt offended, but we decided, we felt that the president was right. Seventy. I asked them, what did he say? He told us that uh, the church in Uganda is making a lot of noise. And uh, they are, he cannot sleep. A lot of music, a lot of whatever. And his wife and his, his daughter is a, is a pastor. And so now he told them he thought when they sing and they pray, there will be new factories. He thought when they sing and they pray, there will be new industries. They will come up with new universities, new innovations. He thought they will come up with now new technologies. But he realized they are singing and after singing, there's nothing that is happening. And the Bible tells me when they prayed, the place where they were praying, it is shook. Can you do like something like that? So when you pray, hmm, when you pray, then there were people who are called Quakers. Listen to me quickly before my time runs out. The Quakers, when they quaked, they came out with the first bank, Barclays Bank, after one of their leaders, Quakers. When they quaked, they produced William Wilberforce, who went and changed the legislation in Parliament. Can you do like this? When they quaked, they came up with the first railway line. Do like this. When they quaked, now they came up with the new medical now discoveries when they quaked. Yes. So when you pray, what happens? When we pray, what happens? Huh? And we are here praying and crying. And look, we look like we are very godly. But let me tell you, prayer is an empowerment process. Prayer is not an end in itself. Prayer is a process of empowerment for you to do. It is not an end in itself. And that's why we went wrong. That's why I'm saying in Africa, we need African Christian identity. And so, one of the things that I think we need to, we need, when, because we don't have identity. Now, all of us, when the minister, now, when the, the minister of agriculture, uh, he is there to go and see how he can do import you know, foodstuffs to Nigeria, to feed Nigeria. And this is the minister of, you know, agriculture. When now the minister of health is sick, he has to go to London for medical checkup. And yet he's the minister of health. The minister of education will take his student to Oxford and to America. And that is the Minister of Education. Nonsense. That is the product of lack of African identity. And let me tell you, we are going to make Nigeria better. We are going to make Africa better. Hallelujah. Yeah. Are you with me? Do you see where we went wrong? All of us, we are lost. 
All of us we are lost. This is unbelievable. Huh? The minister of technology and IT is ministering nothing. There is no technology that has been created. We are buying technology from, from America, from China. We are buying technology from everywhere. Let me tell you, my friend, we are not producing. Every, most of the product in our supermarket are processed outside this country. And that we are singing here. I think if Museveni comes here, he will tell you nonsense. And I will, I will say amen. Instead, now yesterday, Professor Vincent, who is in Uganda, thank God he's there, and he knows the two statesmen, we are working together there, Dr. Magara and, uh, and, uh, and, um, and um, say, Jumba. These are great men. And he has joined them there. They are friends. We are friends, all of us. And a, a few of us, we have to change Africa. And you have to join the, the band. You have to join the band. We have to change Africa. And we have to write a new identity for Africa. Every time I... I sit, I go on and pray. My wife was telling me, you spend too much time praying. We sleep and by if around three, she finds I'm gone. Because I have to go and pray to get a new idea, to get a new revelation. When you pray, you get a new idea, a new revelation. And during the day, you begin to write it, to implement it. That's about Christianity. Not the nonsense we have adopted. Borrowed from missionaries who came here and they did, some of them did not know what they were bringing. They brought one sided gospel. We want the whole gospel. We want the whole gospel. We want an approach, a holistic approach to the kingdom. And that's why when my brother invited me, huh? invited me, I canceled everything. He changed again. I canceled everything. And so, because I believe in what Dominion City is doing. It's one of the ministries doing kingdom, not church. I want, there's a clip that I, I want to show you. Uh, we have begun to transform the region. Before I come to the last bit of my message, um, I'm sure you have gotten a point, eh? Okay? So if we pray now, you have a point. Eh? I like when we pray, you have a point. Not some... Okay, where is the clip I thought somebody was given? Yes, sir, make it loud for a while. Welcome to this inspiring journey into the heart of Machakos County, Kenya, where the Christian Impact Mission, CIM, is transforming lives through its biblically empowered worldview model and approach. We apply the biblical principles in agriculture, biblical principles in every aspect of life for mindset change. If we use the Abraham principle, which is when Abraham settled in Beersheba, the first thing he did was to look for water. Yata is only dry. Only dry. Mind. When you change the mind, then the other will be wet. If Karamajom is wet, then the minds are dry. Even the land will be dry. Recently, a team from Karamoja, Uganda, visited to witness these transformative efforts firsthand. In Yada, CM works closely with local farmers, empowering them to cultivate and thrive. This mirrors their work with the Pokot pastoralists in Kenya, who share similar challenges and opportunities with the Karamoja. The impact of CIM's work is visible in the lush, thriving crops and vegetables, a testament to the transformation taking place. Among the reasons why there is food insecurity in Karamoja is simply the mindset. People think 
the land is not good. So then the people are mainly looking after cattle out in the bush. It's only the women who are in the gardens. Some years when there is no rain at all, no planting. And that really makes people be food insecure. One most important thing that I've learned here in Yata Machakos, Kenya, is that it is possible to be able to still do farming when there is no rain. We do not need to depend on rain to be able to do farming. What we need is water. We went around the, 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 the area of, uh, of, uh, of Yata here. Uh, the experience that I saw is that at least each household right now is having a water pond and uh, which helps them run their production year in, year out. CIM's approach isn't just local, it has an international appeal, as seen in their projects in Tanzania. Bishop Masika has been a great inspiration for us here in Tanzania. Um, I think primarily because he goes right to the heart of dealing with the mindset issue that keeps people trapped in poverty. It's all about breaking dependency on government, on world vision, that thinking process that I don't have anything unless you give it to me. And with Bishop Masika and his ministry, we've been able to bring people to Yata. They've been able to see in an arid environment that it's possible to do farming and do farming very productively so that very poor people can actually be accessing markets as far away as yeah. Europe. CIM's biblically empowered worldview is more than a model, it's a movement a movement worth replicating for community transformation across the globe. In our strategy, um, we think about two things, two main things. One is modeling and the other one is mentorship. Modeling is where we believe that every community, for us to uh, see success, we have to come to a place where we uh, identify the people with potential. Most times we have find people working in our communities look at the people who are most needy. But in our strategy, we look at the people with most potential because it is them who will serve as models within those communities. Once we have people who have changed that we can see, change that we can identify with, others who emulate. We had two, three now villages that began and using those villages, we grew them to 12. 20, now there are over 80 villages. Now most of the families have one, two, three or four, five small dams and they can do irrigation now for two years. It is very possible to now reclaim and redeem the land in Karmoja. It is very possible. So when we bring people to Yata and they see the work that is going on with people who had been previously relying on food aid, they become so inspired. If you can do it in a place like this, that has only maybe three weeks of rain in a year, I know that I can do this back at home in Tanzania on my small, small farm. If it could be done in Yada, in the driest plateaus of Kenya, it could be done in other regions, especially in Africa. Working with, um, <clears throat> working with Christ, um, Church Missionary Society, CMS, who brought Christianity in Africa. In Uganda, we have gone to the poorest communities, and God is changing them.
working with the Life Ministry Campus Crusade. We have gone to some communities that live in the forest called Batwa. Mm -hmm. They were in the center and God changing their mindset. They have gone and they are doing wonders. Changing the mindset of the Tanzanians. They became exporters and, um, and one of the country they are bringing food is Kenya and now all over the world. We, we, well, they brought one, one, one working area. They succeeded. The world donors came and saw and they gave them money to replicate our model in the entire country of Tanzania. <laughs> Who are these people? And now we have been also, we are in Rwanda. Actually the African, the East African. Tomorrow, tomorrow, a team of leaders, the third group is coming from Ethiopia. It will be in our sender. I'll find them there. So CIM and myself, we are talking, we are doing what I'm talking about. And governments are wondering, what, why, why is the change? Why is the radical change? When others are taking a lot of time, when you change people's mindset, people's um, identity, they are able, you empower them, and they are able to solve all their problems. We need to create innovation and the spirit of creativity and innovation, and we are going to change Africa. Right now, I want, before I move to the next, I want us to export missionaries all over Africa. But this time, not missionaries to go and set up just a church in a nest state. And people come and dance there and sing there. Now we have enough of that. From, the, from Dominion City, we want kingdom. You go and establish a kingdom in a city. And then in that kingdom, you establish even a business network manager who is going to connect that country and Nigeria so that we can take our wares in those countries. We need a change of religion. We need a change of approach. Not the chorus, not the song, not the Bible. That's okay. We have done that enough. We need now to be, you know, leaders in every mountain, as the speaker did this, this afternoon. And so I'll talk this now with them. Um, with a dominion, you know, head, uh, now principal, now not principal secretary, my brother, you know, uh, David. How we can develop ambassadors all over Africa and all over the world. Where you are, just like the Quakers, the Puritan, they developed networks all over the world. And now that's how they became rich. Although later on, they were overtaken by capitalism, which we have dealt with previously. I want us to now mention a few things now before um, a, few, a few things which are necessary for us to win Africa and the world. And uh, how many minutes are remaining so that I don't get into many things. If you could show now at the end of this time, uh, that would be good for me uh, so that I don't get into many details on something. Now, I want us to um, before I get there, I, I was saying, when we develop our, our identity, these are the indicators. These are the indicators of an African, African Christian identity. New African Christian identity. Number one is to develop self-esteem. Self-esteem, self-worth, so that we don't need to believe anything in Nigeria is inferior. So we have to buy something from London, from Britain, from America, from China. Nonsense. Huh? That's why I looked for this dress, which I got from Nigeria. And I'm going to look for more. Thank you. I don't want this Muzungu thing. 
We have cotton. We are supposed to make all types of materials in Africa and sell across Africa. Why should we import what we have? So, and we don't need to go to hospital or whatever. We need Dominion City, quality hospital. <laughs> Dominion City, quality high school, quality university. A university with a, with a difference. University that is applying knowledge, applying skills, applying technology. That will be a unique university. Not the one of equipping people with ideas and concepts and giving them letters to read. We need to give people letters to do. When we develop identity, we are going to have new crops, new identities, new products. Because economy is created, wealth is created, when you have a new product. Solving a new demand, a new need. Even if you never did economics. Simple. It's not transferring wealth from one person to another. Number, number two. We need to develop that belief in God. He's the one who gives us power. And then we don't need to depend on the West or on the East. We need to be self-reliant. God giving us power to do. Deuteronomy 8.18. We will have the, have the capacity. We will have the capacity. Huh? To be self-reliant. So we need to develop in Africa identity. Self-reliance. Not dependence. Every president is going to beg money. Lord. Nonsense. Huh? We are going to beg and yet Africa has everything. Huh? So, but of course, the next thing because of time is to develop self-sufficiency so that we have sufficiency in our, among our borders. And that's about abundant life, John 10.10. 10. Abundant life, self-sufficiency. And then that's not enough. We need to develop mechanism, system of self Sustaining, self-propelling. We don't need to depend on anyone. Why our universities? Why our ministers? Why are we going to school? So we need also to develop resilience. And the Bible says in John, in, 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 in John now chapter 8, verse 36, when God sets you free, you are free and free indeed. We must be free from any mindset, any worldview that undermines our capability and our ability in Africa. Now, now we can go to, to the next one. The next one I want to bring on board, indispensable quality. I was supposed to have tackled yesterday. And uh, it's called hard work. Hard work. Now, why we are poor in Africa, we want white collar jobs because in our mindset, we don't want to work. We want easy things brought to us. Let me tell you. Now, all of us here, we are Protestant. Can I hear the word Protestant. Again, in other words, Protestants are people, now a religion that was packed by Martin Luther. Martin Luther, he brought up now the priesthood, um, now he, he made brothers become priests. The priesthood of brothers or the brotherhood of priests or both. And so next thing he did was he brought work as worship. Work was a way of worship in Colossians 3, 23. Please bring that one on board. Colossians 3, um, now 23. This is what they began, the Martin Luther began to teach and, uh, and John Kevin, who are now the founders 
or Protestantism. And whatever you do, can, you, can we read together? Ah, not, not that way. Say it louder. Amen. Another version. I like New King James. Another version. Again, let's do together. Yes. Whatever you do, don't do for men. Don't do for the job. Do for the glory of God. In other words, you are worshiping God. Worshiping is not only singing a song or a chorus. That's what we want to bring on board. Hard work. The Greek worldview did not recognize manual work. That's why you are a product of laziness. And then you say you are saved. From what? By who? You must be delivered properly and entirely. Mm -hmm. So you must be delivered from the humanistic philosophies that rule us, that has disempowered us. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? Yes. So, working hard should be a new way. Working hard, so hard. Everybody stand up quickly. Now, I want you to do like this. Look at me. Look serious. We are not playing games here. I'm not, I'm not a child. Do like this. Now you are working hard. Stretch it. Ah. Stretch it. Stretch it. Ah. You know what we do? We do like this. And that's all. From today, we want to develop a culture. If you are a member of, of Dominion City, and unless you are fake, we want to stretch. Hey, new discoveries, new innovations. Hey, following through. If you want to know, hey, you do more. You research more. You implement more. That is our mark. Sit down. Super. We are not normal. We are not abnormal. We are super. Hey! Okay. Quickly, next one is excellence. Excellence. Oh, everybody has talked about, um, I've talked about, on, I've talked on this. But I am talking about excellence. In the book of uh, Daniel chapter 6, verse 3. Quickly. Uh, Daniel chapter 6, verse 3. And uh, I paraphrase because you know it. It can also be there. And uh, then this Daniel was preferred about the presidents and the princes because an excellent spirit was in him. And the king thought to set him over the whole realm. Why? Because he had a spirit of excellence. Whatever he does was excellent. Beyond the normal. Excellent and super are the same. So he had an excellent spirit. Let me give you an example. A lady from Uganda came to Kenya and there was employed as a maid. And uh, she knew Kenyans, we are not very good in cooking. We, we are good in boiling. Okay? And we don't need to put a lot of mind in cooking. Simple. So this lady came to a town called Kiambu. And she started cooking nice banana 
plantain. She would get some from Uganda, cook nicely. The, the, the meat is cooked in different way, you know, the boiling type. And then everybody would come in a small kiosk. Kiosk is a small shop, you know, hotel. And then uh, lunch hour, people would drive from very far, man. And then when she comes, the food is so nice. They would pack everywhere. So within two months, she got a big place, a big hotel. Within three months, she became at uh, the biggest uh, hotel in town. Now, what does she do? When she, she comes to you, they know how to kneel. In Kenya, our women don't kneel. So they will come and kneel. Sir, what do you need? Hey, the man will look at the lady. Somebody kneeling, uh, you know, for me. Hey. They left everything, came for the kneeling and the food. Because, thank you, because of competitive advantage, she has become a millionaire within a year. Excellence. Excellence. Excellence gives you competitive advantage. You don't compete with a common man. And so, I'm not going to read the other things because of time. Now, wisdom was said, then the final one is diligence. Diligence. The final one is diligence. Now that we read it in um, now Proverbs 22, 29. You can put it there, but we are not going to read. If you are diligent, you are going to eat with the kings. You are going to stand before kings, not sit. Stand. In other words, you'll be addressing them. I have seen that. I'm, I don't want to play my trumpet. I have seen it works. If you, are compet you have competitive advantage, yes, and I want you to stand again before you stand again. Quickly. Now, diligence, I want to, I, 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 I want to explain and demonstrate diligence. Now, diligence has six stages. Stage number one, put your hand like this, and then down like this. It is called pray through. Again. Louder. Okay, number two. When you pray through, you get an idea. I'm sure you're going to remember. Or they're going to write it there for you. Don't worry. So that you can demonstrate because if you write, you can forget. But if I teach you, you never forget. Number two, you plan through. Everybody, you plan. Again, you plan. Yes. You don't pray and then begin doing things without plan. Huh? Or you put all the factors together. Number three, you begin now to implement. So now you begin, now, now you want to see it through. You have the vision now. Huh? Can I see the vision? Now you draw the vision. Where you want to go? Simple. Ah! What is it? Huh? That is about vision. Uh-huh. That's not enough. You can see things. Number four. You begin now to work through. Work through. Put your hand like this. You are working. The stage is the strategic activity. Ah! Ah. Number Now you begin to walk through Okay, walk through You are now walking through the stages To ensure they're well done Just do like this Ah, again like this again. Ah Thank you And then finally It's not over Now finally You begin now now you are going to have prosperity and success because now you are going to have ha ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Put it down, put it up. Ah, it's called breakthrough. Okay, now do it again, again. Ah, now you can clap for yourself. 
Sit down. Now listen to me. As we are coming to close that conclude, I want you to know this. We are not going to be secular. Holistic is driven by the spiritual. Did you get that? We are driven by the biblical worldview. Biblical worldview is the one that empowers us. The Bible is our power, is our source. We learn the biblical principles. As I told you yesterday, yes, we pray, we fast, but when we fast, we go to do. And then, then you must, well, and, we, and the preacher this uh, morning, now he talked about when whatever business you are doing, you want to do whatever enterprise you want to do, they, it is, you are not going to enter a, a plain slate. There are powers, spirits, kingdom, that rule. Then you are supposed to have the spiritual dimension, which I told you yesterday. That is going to open doors for you. Not all the time pray for me. Pray for me. We want empowered Christians. Yes. Where you can go and open. You are an ambassador. Hey. You are not normal. Yes. And finally. And you must be spiritual. We are not going to take businesses to Kenya. To Ghana. To to Egypt, to wherever, we are going to take kingdom. And Jesus said this word, so that I can combine the spiritual, which we always emphasize. This, I, I found these wonderful words in Matthew chapter 10, verse 8. Read that quickly, op, bring that quickly to the screen. Jesus told them, huh? Jesus told the disciples, you are going to be disciples and um, I'm, I'm, I'm bringing the men of God. And we are going, we are going to, um, to establish and crown priests in the marketplace. Okay? So today we are having ordination without uniform. Okay? And he's going to talk about that. But you see, Jesus told them, heal the sick. Put your hand like that. Heal the sick. So when you go doing your business, when you find people, heal the sick. Heal the sick. Number two, cleanse the lepers. Number three, raise the dead. Number, number four, cast out devils. Freely given. Freely received. So my friends, you are not going to find areas without demon. And if you cannot chase out demons, then there's a problem because the Bible says these signs shall follow them those who believe in my name they shall cast out devils we have many churches are casting devils year in year out we don't want babies how did those demons come next time you come here you tell me how they came how did why did you allow them why how they don't just come you have to open the door. Why did you open the door? Huh? We are not going to open doors and you are an ambassador. You must be dignified, solidified. Yes. Dignified, solidified. Everywhere you go. Thank you. Um, Bishop. Ah, I extended your time by 15 minutes. You are uh, not finished. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. You know, I know he does that all the time. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, hey! Hallelujah! We are going to take over. And, and you know, you must resemble your father. Your father is a statesman. 
Huh? The leader of Dominion City is, is the statesman. When he came over here this morning, he can, under, he can see all the things you have done. Uh-huh. He will tell you all the, you know, all the situation in your heart. He doesn't struggle. He's highly spiritual. <laughs> Deeply spiritual. Yes. And this man, if he be, you know, he begins businesses, he can be the richest man in Africa. But he, his commodities are source, so he's very rich. Okay? He trends in source. And you know, I've been wondering, why do we allow fake preachers? Huh? In our country, and some of you have, some of them have come from here. They come all the time, they are demon casting. And when they cast demon, they say they are apostles. Can I suck them in the morning or in the afternoon? People who cast devils are not called apostles. They are called believers. <laughs> Open for me, Mark. Mark 16, verse 17. And I'll show you. People who cast out devils are not called apostles. Apostles are like, you know, our, our brother, I can't mention the, the, the surname because it is a G and B and we pronounce each one of them. So I call him David, no, not because I, I demean him. In Africa, in our place, we don't call people by the Christian name. You use the surname. But anyway, you allow me to call David because the other one is Ogbuel. Okay, get there. Let's begin from verse 16. And these signs, no, no, it's okay. Let's go to 17. Let's still go. And can you read with me? Uh huh. They shall follow who? They shall follow who? Uh huh. And then when you, you are a believer, these are the indicators. If we are casting demons on you and you have been saved for the last five years, then you are fake. Okay? They shall do number one. Louder. Again. Not be cast devils, but cast out devils. Next. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not French, not English, not Spanish. You shall speak in other tongues where the devil might not understand. Horababa Shanda. Thunder. Mm -hmm. And then next, move on. They shall. Uh, uh, yes, then uh, again. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. All the witches in Nigeria, all their charms are invalid before a believer. Yes. Yes. If anybody try to bewitch you, poison you, it will be useless because you are a believer. You are insured. Insured and insured. And assured, aya. Uh -huh. Next thing, what will be the believers do? And then, yeah, stand. Hey, what shall they do? Who are? And then, yes. Let me tell you, my friends. I see people praying. And they pray as if God is, a, is, is not hearing. Huh? Many times, I just say a word. 
Because I'm a believer. Receive your healing in Jesus' name. I met a bishop the other day. And I told me, Bishop, you came to um, the hospital and I was diagnosed with cancer some 40 years ago. And uh, they said I will not leave for two months. And when you came, I went to the hospital because he used to support our ministry. He was a teacher. So I went to him and I, he told me, you know, he was crying. I said, I, I'm not going to pray. I told him, young man, stand up, rise up and go home. I have discharged you. I have discharged you. And the gentleman went to the, to the, um, to the registry office. They said, I've been discharged. By who? I was not a doctor that time. By, 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 by Masika. Hey. And he said, no, you cannot be discharged. We have to wait. He said, I'm going home. And the guy went home. The guy got healed. Forty years later, we met in a conference with my wife. He was sitting next. He told me I got healed and I walked out of that hospital. I've never had any cancer after today. I did not pray for him. I said a word. Why? Because I'm a believer. Two months ago, a lady called me and told me in 1980, you prayed for me, I was sick and I got healed. Later on, I got an opportunity to go to America. But I, I've been looking for your number. I've been looking for your number because I got healed. And then somebody gave her the number. She called me, sent some offering. And of course, I was not after it anyway. Are you hearing, my friend? Yes. What did I do? I found her in a conference. I said a word. And God healed her. Why? Not because I'm a prophet. I'm a, I'm, I'm, I am an apostle. I was a believer. We want to see people. Uh-huh. Are you hearing? Yeah. A lady, when we were working out, came to us and she said, you know, she told mama, can you pray for me? I won't say many things. And then I said a word. She started now, you know, from her head, power came, you know, over. I did not even have time to pray because soldiers are around from the gate. I don't want uh, David to come and find that I'm praying, you know, when I'm finished preaching. You know, because I'm a believer. Hey! We want to get people. So, from here, when you go home, are you hearing? Cast out devils. Cast out devils. Can I hear that word? Where is it? Cast out devils. Heal the sick. Yes. Raise up the dead. Oh, it is there. No, we are not there. We are in the other one. Yes. Now, not these signs. The other one. Matthew, Matthew. Matthew, Matthew the Matthew, yes. Chapter 10, verse 7. Yes. The one where we read before. You have forgotten. <laughs> 10, verse 8. Yes, verse 8. Heal the sick, everybody. Tell your friend, heal the, heal the sick. Why? Because we are believer. Number two, cleanse the levers. Raise the dead. Cast out devils. Freely you have received, freely give. Let's give an hand clap to Jesus. Are you hearing? You need to apply your faith. I apply my faith in healing, in business, in science, everything. Because the Holy Spirit is all round. Huh? Are you hearing? But there are, God uses some principles. The other day, I was praying. I had a big mission, I mentioned that in the first day. A big mission and I had a very big budget. And I was praying, the people had promised, partners, they all backed out, others could not respond, and I don't like, you know, following people. I'm not a beggar. And so I said, nonsense. And um, 
I almost felt like I went to pray to God. Why God should I be left alone? Are these are my people? I was almost like talking like Moses. Are these are my people? Why should I be left alone? Then the money that I'd received, I took it to another ministry, senior ministry, and I gave all of it three days before the big mission, covering our entire area. Let me tell you, and I believed in God because I know how God works. If you want to be blessed, plant in others. If it is money, you have to plant money. There are seeds of every kind. So I planted it and I went home. Now people now started calling. I'm going, I, um, you had talked about the vehicle. I'm giving my vehicles. I'm giving whatever. I'm paying accommodation. I am giving this for whatever. Let me tell you, the budget that we had was surpassed and we're surplus. The other day, I'm telling how God works in every way. The other day, now I'm building a sender. Um, you know, a sender that looks like kingdom. Because recently I received congressmen from Nigeria. I've received ministers. And when they come and see my office, it looks like a toilet. I said, no, this is not a kingdom. I, I belong. Although I, you know, I don't believe in whatever, but it's good I must look like a kingdom. And then I started building. A building worth millions, dollars, big one. And then by the, this year, I found I didn't have money to continue. It was coming little, little. I said, nonsense. I took all the money in March. And I, I said, I'm going to support two ministries, two organizations. I, I supported the first project. And in August, I supported the other one. And now... I'm trusting God. Before the end of the year, I'll have gotten all the million from this man. In Jesus' name. Yes. This is how God works. You, you know, in other words, you must be rounded. That's what I'm talking about. Stand up. Put your, put your pen and books down. It's now not time for books. It's not time for books now. There's time for everything. Now, this is the time we want to pray. We want to pray. We want to pray. We want to pray. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. We want to pray. We want to pray. We want to pray. To begin praying, Allah. Do you need a song to pray? You pray. All the things you have said. And then I, of course, we are taking over, we're moving on to the next destination. Just continue. Don't look at me. I'm not a prayer. Minister, two, two songs just before we move on. Give her a mic. Hallelujah. the shield for me you are my glory and the lifter of my head for thou oh Lord are the shield for me you are the glory and the lifter of my head.
everyone everybody say wow. wow super super say I'm not normal and I'm not abnormal I'm super normal don't ever forget that one more time I'm not normal I'm not abnormal I'm super normal Give the Lord praise. Give him praise. As you, say. you may be seated. I don't have words to tell you. Thank you, sir. Join me to say thank you and thank you and thank you again. Let me tell you guys something. Do you know that he's 76? Does he look it? He looks like he's in his 50s. You see what he was telling you about mama? That she is grandmother. Does she look it? She doesn't. When you are on purpose, God will be renewing your engine. You look like you are just in your 50s. Amen. Okay. So this night is about practicals because it's the last session. Um, do they have work tomorrow? They didn't give us public holidays. They should have given us tomorrow. This conference is not over yet. Oh. It's not over yet. Oh. Tuesday is Independence Day. Uh -huh. Pastor Shola will tell us, I'm going to do one more session, but they are all practical before we leave. Some of my team flew out to South Africa this evening. I can, I can come late a little. Let me have that day with you guys because it's not, it's not finished. It, the whole thing now is about deployment. Everyone said deployment. Okay. So, the team is the kingdom church. Let me give you, can I get 12 guys? And only one will be wearing white. So, I'm going to give you some five practicals now. Only one person will be wearing white. Only one. No, you come from a circle. From a circle, hold your hand round. From a circle. 
The man that is wearing white will be in the middle, not in the circle. Join your hands and form a circle. So the man inside, count them and know if they are complete. If they are up to 12 around you. So with the person inside, you will be 13. Are you complete? Now, it's called the G12 model. G means government. Everyone say kingdom. Say government. So this is the vision of God and this strategy you can deploy. It's called the G12 strategy. Anywhere to begin to take any institution, any sphere, any area. When God wanted to start the human family, do you know how many people he used to lay the foundation? Twelve people. Go back to your Bible in Genesis and count from Adam to Noah. Twelve. When God wanted to build the nation of Israel, go and check how many patriarchs he used to do it. Twelve. All the time it was Abraham, he couldn't get that nation until he got the twelve patriarchs. When God wanted to start the church, go and check how many apostles he used to do it. Twelve. Now, when he gets twelve, which is the foundation, it's called divine government because we're discussing kingdom now. It's called divine government. How God implements his government. So what you're going to do here is where you live here, you will be the one man, the white man in the middle. You find 12 people around you. And this team is to take education. This team is to take, start a movement in government. This team is to take the, the entertainment industry. This team is to find the area where God is calling you to. But don't go alone. No general goes to battle alone and come back. We're going to anoint a number. When you live here, you go and recruit 12 men. When God sits in heaven, I want you to watch divine government. So you look at it. Is that model? Everybody say, Our Father, which art in heaven. Lift up your hands. Say, Our Father, which art in heaven. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. We're going to do it one more time. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. Now, I want you to watch. When God sits in heaven, there are 12 seats on this right with 12 elders sitting on it. Those elders are the patriarchs that drove the new covenant. That city. Because he's still keeping the covenant he made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Then on this side, there is another 12 seats. These are the 12 patriarchs. He called them apostles. That drove the New Testament church. The elders. They call government. Kingdom wise is implemented on the number 12. Satan uses the number 10. So anytime you read Revelation and you hear about the beast and those 10 horns, there's seven horns and 10, 10 horns and seven heads. You always see that. Then you see the dragon, Satan again. Seven horns, I mean, seven heads, 10 horns. Is the structure of his government. Let me give you two examples so that you know. When Satan raised a man to use him to destroy the nation of Israel, that means that thing was Satan's structure on earth, even though he was using a human being. His name was Haman. God used Esther to take, it, take that man out. How many henchmen did Haman have? Who knows? Ten. Ten. They called it the ten sons of Haman. So when Haman was hanged, ten of them were hanged. Let's try one more time. There was another time Satan was operating at the global scene and he wanted to wipe out the Jewish people. And he raised another man called Hitler. And he said he was bringing a final solution. The Jewish nation would be wiped out. He actually killed up to six million of them. 
How many henchmen does Hitler have? Who knows? Ten. And guess what? They also died by hanging. When the world court sat after the U.S. came into the battle and they, they, they destroyed and the Second World War ended, they sat at the court, judged them, and they went and read the judgment given to Herman and the, during their start time, hanging. Instead of electric chair, instead of fires, and they hanged them. Ten henchmen again. And when the last guy was about to hang, he shouted Purim. Purim is the feast of Esther. Since that day, the Jews celebrate every year, remembering what Esther did for them. He shouted that. He said, the God of the Jews have done it again. Has repeated history. Now, when you read this bad guy that is coming, you call the Antichrist. The book of Revelation reveals that he's going to have seven heads, just like the dragon has. He's Satan incarnate. And ten horns. And later, the book of Revelation reveals, he said these ten horns are ten men. Powerful people. They have no yet received their kingdom, but they will receive the kingdom with the beast. Now, they sent me their constitution of the new world order with which they will run this government. And you know, they broke the whole world into ten regions. One man is going to govern Africa. Already you know about EU. That Europe is now one. And you have a leader for EU. And guess how long does that man that rule EU last? Seven years. How long did the Bible prescribe that the Antichrist will last? Seven years. Now, they have North American. They have the Middle East. They have, that's how they've grouped the whole world into ten. And there's going to be ten men then surrounding this deadly guy that is about to emerge. All these evil things you see them plotting, walking, is to finally lead the world into that place. The same way God destroyed Herman, the same way God destroyed Hitler, is the same way he's going to destroy this beast. But God's counter kingdom runs on 12. If you don't have your 12, you don't have a kingdom. If you are running on individuality, you don't understand kingdom. This is what you're going to do. Then you broke yeah. The, the, when you have this structure, that man at the center is the custodian of the vision. You break down the assignment into 12 sectors and assign it to. So that none of these people are competing. Each person is focusing on an area. Let's look at Israel, for example. Just to give you an example. The tribe of Levi is the one in the center. They are the priests. The tribes of Israel are the ones that surround them. So because Jacob had 12 sons, when you take one and put in the center, it's 11 left. So it's not up to 12. So this is what Jacob did. He called Joseph. Joseph had two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, and said, bring your two, two sons. And he brought them. He laid hands on them. He said, they are no more your children. They are now mine. Now, Jacob elevated Joseph's sons to the level of his brother. They became their father's brother. By ordination. And he brought Ephraim and Manasseh and made them tribes in Israel. That also gave Joseph two portions. When other tribes are getting two portions. Double portions should have belonged to the first son, but something happened. Let's not discuss it today. He went to sleep with his fathers. So he lost the right of the first son. And that right now went to Joseph. So today, when they count the tribes of Israel, there is a tribe of Ephraim, Joseph's son. There is a tribe of Manasseh, Joseph's son. So the same thing happened. When one of the tribes that Jesus set up, there were two of them, fell. You know the one that fell? Everyone say Judas. By financial corruption. The other one was father's wife. The father had a, a younger wife that was about his age. He was a maid to his original wife, Leah. So, he married the younger girl to, to get this 12 tribes. God so wanted to get the 12 men that he permitted Jacob to have four women to give him the children. So, in the New Testament, when one of the tribe also was disconnected, the apostles had to call a meeting. Before Pentecost, so Peter called them at the upper room 
and said, we can't go to Pentecost with 11. It is 12. Some, one of us is dead. He committed suicide and he, he betrayed the master. If anybody betrays, replace him. Clap. Oh. So, they brought two men qualified. They gave the condition. As God who knows the heart of all men. We don't want another Judas in this company. Choose between these two who you are. And they cast vote. And Matthias was the one that replaced Judas. So, when we get to heaven, there won't be Judas. He will be in hell. And somebody else took. Because. Up Rick, let another person take. Somebody took his apostolic office. If you throw away your mandate, somebody else will take it. Jesus warned us against that in the book of Revelation. You have to be careful that no other person take your crown. That's what he said. Because he promised these people, when the Son of Man sits, you are going to sit on 12 thrones, ruling the 12 tribes of Israel. Why would Jesus sit? That is the 13th person surrounded by 12 because that's the divine order. So a kingdom church, see how it is structured. For every one pastor you ordain, 12 men must be ordained for the marketplace, commissioned for the marketplace. It is not 12 in the church, one in the society. It is one at the altar, 12 out there in the culture. Clap well. So, the Levite, be at the altar and be serving priest and be praying for 12 out there walking and influencing the world. What they do is that they understand walk as worship. Watch, you just heard, you just read the scripture today. Eh? They understand walk as ministry business as ministry. Vocation as ministry. When you are going on Monday, you prepare like a pastor because you're going to reach people. So it is this 12 that reach far more people than that man hiding at the temple. He is not the one engaging people. It is these ones that are out there engaging people. And let me show you something about how God separated them. So that everybody has his assignment. Nobody needs to compete. Levi is priest. So he's dealing with religion. So today, church. Judah is government. He's dealing with politics. Policies. Security matters. Governance. And politics alone has so much under it. So Judah, break down your structures and your people and take care of every aspect of governance and public service. Dan deals with judicial, the legal issue. There are judges, are done. Joseph deals with the economy. And that's from vocational skill to professional to businesses. And be, even businesses exist in two levels. If you go to the water, into the ocean, you see that fish exist in two levels. You see the normal, you can even call them domestic fish. Because you can bring them and put it in an aquarium inside your house. Some of you even have decoration in your parlor with water and something pumping. 
and you see fish there. Those kind of fish you can domesticate. Because that's how the animal kingdom is. You have domestic animals. They are called cattle. There are some of them you can turn to pets. Like dog and cats and so on. But in the water you have wild animals. Those are not domestic fish. Like shark. They will eat you. Hmm? In the business world, you have those two layers of business. You have businesses that eat businesses. If you watch this, this snake world, there are two layers. All those small, small snakes everywhere. They are dangerous. But then you meet the pythons. The anacondas that can swallow human beings. You meet King Cobra that swallows other snakes. He takes other snakes like this. Boom. He enters. So that day, when Pharaoh's magicians cast their rod, they became snakes. And Moses cast his rod. That his rod became a King Cobra. Because that's the shape Jesus takes in the spirit. And he swallowed all the rods of Egypt. One snake oh, swallowed ten and balanced. That's when Pharaoh knew that this one was not normal. Say it again. I'm not normal. And I'm not abnormal. I'm super normal. Bishop, we won't forget you in a hurry. I'm telling you. And you're coming back. And you're coming back. And very soon we'll go to government. We'll go to the parliament. We'll go to Nigeria. Yes. I'm super normal. Say it. How can you carry the Holy Ghost and be normal? Hey, hey anyway, what, what were we talking about? So, in the business world, there are small ventures. Small, you know, micro, and small ventures. You know, everywhere, small, small. That's good. It's allowed in every kingdom. If you look at the trees, you see flowers, you see plants, you know, grasses. You see small, small plants, some are herbs, some are green that you eat with, you go and pluck to eat. But then in that kingdom, you have irukus, you have mahoganies, you have some pine trees, if you see their height. Now, you must start as a small venture, your goal, because we're talking about raising kings in the marketplace. Your goal is to move that company to a conglomerate. After a while, you start acquiring small, small companies around you. They become part of your network ecosystem. Because there's the guys, you know, they, they have one powerful innovation, but you see them, so you give them a, a capital they can't refuse and acquire both the guy, the owner of this, every. You give him strong equity. Because if you don't give him, he will go start another one. He has the innovation. So you don't allow a Joseph go. You give him not thoroughly equity. So he's part owner. So that after acquiring him, you leave him to run his business. You will now have a stake. He has a stake. And it is this principle that God calls covenant. It's, clap well on. A business covenant or a marriage covenant, any other type of covenant, is not an arrangement of putting one person down. No. Kingdom is a kingdom of kings. You put him as a slave, he's looking for freedom. You give him empowerment in the system, he relaxes and builds that thing with you for life. This is an example of covenant. Can you see two of them? She has not said anything since we came here. But I can tell you, part of the success you are seeing on that pulpit is the woman's prayer. <laughs> Clap well. No? So, how did God arrange this? He said, and the two shall be what? 
not slave. If he's slave, she'll be looking at her freedom. She will have escaped from his house since. So, when you get your 12, it is not 12 slaves working for one boss. It's 12 covenant partners. They bind themselves with covenant to drive a common vision. And everybody has a stake. Clap, oh, clap. That's why Jesus promised all of them 12 thrones. Not that there in the kingdom you'll be washing my car. You'll be my slave. It's Satan that oppress, operates a different type of kingdom that oppresses. In his kingdom oppression, in the kingdom of God, it's a kingdom of kings. God calls you, he makes you son, family, then he raises you as kings and priests. Clap for him, or clap for him. Or. No oppression. This is how we are going to liberate Africa. You are going to run an empowerment-oriented business. That business makes people while you are making money. That business makes people first. But it will make billions. But in the course of making billions, you have raised a lot of men. Watch what I'm doing with DC. The system here is not one big boss and a group of slaves that are, that's not what we do here. We're raising kings and pastors and give them domain. Come and conquer it. And we don't put limits. If any of them is not flying, it is not us limiting him. There is no flight limit. Clap, oh. I told our pastors, I'm looking forward to when we come for pastors' conference. By then, self stadium is what we use just to gather our pastors. Yeah. And all of you will fly with private jet. Me, I will come up. I will, I will come on bicycle. And I told them I will ride in into that place with bicycle. Yet I'm bigger than all of you. Because it's not the jet that makes your greatness. It's how many people you raise. How many people you raise? How many people you raise? How many communities you transform? How many lives you change? Because a building cannot be greater than its foundation. I hope you heard that proverb. You can sit down. This is the mission. And then from this 12 now, you mandate them to go and conquer. So anytime you, you want to raise funds, you call your 12, share the money into 12. Anytime you want to implement whatever, you call your 12, share the burden, 